the skull of the riblets control the turbulent channel. Uh, okay, Zhang Danyu. Hello, can you see my screen and hear my voice? Yes, you can start. Okay. Dear teachers and fellow classmates, good evening or good morning, everyone. I'm Zhang Danyu from Suzhou University. Today, I will report on investigation of the vertical structures by the latex method in a scallop riblet controlled turbulent channel. Now, I will elaborate it from four aspects the introduction, methods, results, and conclusion. The first part is introduction. As shown in Figure A, the shell skin is not smooth but covered with regularly arranged micro riblet structures. Researchers have found that these micro riblets along the flow direction can effectively reduce the surface friction drag. Scientists simplified the characteristics of shark skin as riblet surface and studied various cross-sectional shapes of riblet structures. Riblets are cons considered one of the most famous passive turbulence drag reduction methods. The application of riblet drag reduction technique has significant benefits. Triangular riblets have gained significant attention from researchers due to their less prone to damage. With uh, lower manufacturing costs, streamwise triangular riblets achieve the maximum drag reduction of 8% at the dimensionless height of H plus is equal to 10, and the dimensional spacing of S plus is equal to 15. There are two representative theories explaining the drag reduction mechanism on the riblet surface. One is secondary vortex theory, and another is protrusion high theory. It defines the protrusion high as the distance from the river tip to equivalent smooth surface. It suggests that part of the flow within the riblet is hidden by viscosity, effectively increasing the thickness of viscosal sublayer reducing the average velocity gradient and resulting drag reduction. Chini et al. further investigates drag reduction from the perspective of the protrusion high theory to achieve a higher drag reduction rates. Based on the mean streamwise velocity and the mean spanwise velocity, the streamwise protrusion height and the vertical protrusion height are defined. The difference between the two is referred to as the protrusion height hereafter, indicating the degree of obstruction to spanwise flow fluctuations relative to the streamwise flow. The second part is methods. This study mainly investigates the drag reduction effects of a smooth flat plate, scallop riblet channels, and triangular riblet channels. Experimental studies have shown that for riblet shaped surfaces, drag reduction increases with increasing the tip capture or the radius of the capture. This implies that the optimal blood ship should have sharp tips and curved bellies. However, subsequent research has placed more emphasis on the sharpness of the river tips rather than the valleys. The scabs riblets studied by one at all is constructed by smoothly connecting two third order plumbers compared with the corresponding triangular riblets with sharper tips. The scab riblet has a smaller tip capture and is less prone to erosion in practical applications. One and all utilize the boundary elementary method proposed by Lucini and or to calculate the protrusion heights of the scalp riblet structure with different A, B, and gamma values. The results show that for a larger high-wise ratio gamma, 
the pressure high is mainly determined by the value of A, which represents the capture at the rebellious tip. Conversely, for smaller gamma values, the pressure high mainly depends on the value of B, which represents the capture at the rebellious value. By defining the captures of the tip and the valley as A and B, as well as the high-wise ratio gamma, the shape of the scab rivulet can be well defined and described. The parameters you see in the study are A is equal to 25, B is equal to 1.6, and gamma is equal to 0 0.5, which one at all started. Several commonly used methods such as Q delta, lambda 2, lambda ci, omega methods, and others can be used for visualizing vortices, which are all based on the entry values of the velocity gradient tensor. However, these methods have some problems. There are differences in physical direction and the unique expression. They all have the problem of shell contamination. They are scalars and cannot locate the important rotation information of the rotation axis. The Lutex vector proposed by Liu et al. is defined as twice the angular velocity of the rigid rotation part of the fluid motion and its direction as the local rotation axis without the shell contamination. One and all give an explicit expression for the test vector R, which contains the velocity omega, engine values, and engine vectors of the velocity gradient tensor. With the high computational efficiency and the intuitive physical meaning, the expression is following. While lambda ci is the imaginary part of complex conjugate engine value, and r is the real engine vector of the velocity gradient tensor. Many experimental and numerical solutions have shown that UTEX can actually accurately and quarterly capture both large and small voltages better than existing methods. The study will use the Lutex Vortex Fiction method to analyze the variations of turbulence channel flow controlled by rebloods. In this study, Numerical simulations of turbulent channel flow at a Renault number of 180 were conducted using the open source finite difference software in Compressor D to investigate the drag reduction effects of smooth fly plates, scap rivulets, and triangular rivulets. Periodical boundary conditions were applied to achieve periodicity in the streamwise and spanwise directions. While no slip conditions were applied on the upper and lower wall surfaces in the wall normal direction. A customized uh, immersed boundary method based on an uh, alternating direction was forcing to use, ensure a no slip boundary condition at the wall of the solid. A six order compact scheme is used for special deviation calculations, and a low storage third order range cooter scheme is employed for time advancements. Uniform grids are utilized in the streamwise and spanwise directions, while a stretch grids are employed in the world normal direction to concentrate grid points near the world. The skin friction coefficients are computed as follows. For the rebound flow field, since the flow in the spanwise direction is not homogeneous, a service integral form is adopted to define the skin friction coefficient in the dominator. Spanwise length Ly of the computational domain is used instead of the actual rebound curved service length Lr in order to make the skin friction coefficients directly reflect the total drag exerted on the wall surface. The third part is the results. 
the friction coefficients are recorded for 500 time units and the cumulative averages of the skin friction coefficients are also shown. Indicating a clear reduction in drag, the average skin friction coefficients for the flat plates, fibular wall, and the triangular wall are 8.075 times 10 to the power of minus 3. 7.374 times 2 times to the power of minus 3. 7.688 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Respectfully, meaning that the drag is reduced by 8.68% and 4.79% for the regular wall and the triangular wall. Scalloped ribulars provide a great drag reduction effect compared to the triangular ribulars. For corresponding triangular ribulars with same y same wall units and same high y ratio, Walsh reports a 2% drag reduction, while Troy reports a 5% drag reduction. Similar sightings for blade ribulars in a larger renal number. 550 results in a 4.53% drag reduction. Generally, the current drag reduction rate of scalp ribblet is higher than corresponding triangle ribblet with sharp tips. In addition, the scalp tips are beneficial for the manufacturing and the maintainers. The magnitude of the renal shear stress reflects the overall turbulence intensity in the flow field indirectly indicating the potential level of jet. The figure shows the renal stress near the regular surface with prime donating fluctuations. Figure 2 shows the renal stress in the streamwise direction. Figure 3 shows the renal stress in the spanwise direction. Figure 4 shows the renal stress in the more normal direction. This figure is heavy same characteristics for both scalloped and triangular ribblets. Compared to the region above the tip of the ribblet, the north shear stress is significantly smaller in the valley, indicating near the high speed external flow doesn't uh, penetrate into the valley. Furthermore, about uh, y is about uh, 0 0.11. The flow becomes nearly uniform in the spiral direction, consistent with the assumption of the viscous limit. The magnitude of streamwise turbulence is several orders of magnitude larger than the world normal and spanwise stresses. The normal stresses in all three directions are significantly smaller in the scalped ribblets compared to the triangular ribblets. So, world normal stress along the streamwise direction, the renal stress in the scalloped ribulus gives a smaller variation in the valley with smoother and spacer counter lines compared to the triangular ribulus. This implies that the fluid being lifted away from the surface, increasing the signals of the turbulent boundary layer and causing the ribulus surface to slightly avoid high intensity turbulence. The density of counter lines at the lip of ribblets also indicate that. The turbulence intensity, intensity is significantly higher in triangular ribblets compared to scalp ribblets. The world normal renal stress near the ribblet surface is consistently negative, indicating that negative one well, normal fluctuations is typically accompanied by positive streamwise fluctuation and vice versa from conjoint analysis. More events occur in the second or fourth conjoints on the UV plane. Known as injection and sweeps, intuitively downward fluctuations bring high speed flow towards the world, generating positive streamwise fluctuation. While upward fluctuations divert low speed flow away from the wall, generating negative streamwise fluctuation. The north shear stress represents the 
conversion of streamlined turbulence to warm normal motion, reflecting the degree of vertical mixing in the flow field. The triangular blood show a W shaped pattern in the warm normal Reynolds stress, indicating more intense vertical mixing in the near wall region. The green in figure six means no correlation between the fluctuations. Figure 6a and figure 6b are quite different. There exists both positive and negative renal stress symmetry about the midpoint of the river. The concentrations of UW in scalloped riblets is much higher than that in triangular riblets. For positive stream-wise fluctuations, the correlated spar-wise velocity would drive them towards the river tips. While for negative stream-wise fluctuations, the correlated spar-wise velocity would drive them to the top of the rivulet valleys. Figure 7 exhibits similar characteristics for both scalps and triangular rivulets. For the concentrations around the y is equal to 0.07 in VW plots, it can be interpreted as spawn-wise fluctuations towards the ripple tips, would be lifted up while spawn-wise fluctuations towards the top of the ripple valley tends to be pushed downwards. Another thing that needs to be noticed is that the concentration of UW near scalloped rivulets located substantially higher than that of VW. Figure 8 shows the instantaneous vertistic contours without the riblets, scalloped riblets, and the triangular riblets R is equal to 0 0.95, showing the vertex structures. Despite the chaotic appearance, we can observe typical structures in turbulent channels, including streamline vertices, helping vertices, and arc vertices. The vertical structure of the three cases are similar. In the right two figures, streamwise vertices above the river tips can be observed. Compared to a smooth fly plate, scalp riblet channel and triangular bridge channel exhibit slightly reduced vertices near the wall. Figure 9 shows the ISO service of the absolute value of the lutex component Rx. The blue stripes on the R is equal to 0 0.95. ISO service only appear on the IX ISO service. With the streamwise OTC located near the wall, thus recovering that vortices actually above the relatives are streamwise vortices. Figure 10 shows the uh, the service of the absolute of the tax component Ry. In the first plot, multiple lengthy vortices along the y direction can be observed. However, for the riblet control cases, the y direction vortices are less and lack the directional arrangement. Also, there are a few low speed vortices near the wall. Figure 11 shows ISO service of the absolute value of the latex component RZ. We can observe fewer structures under the right rebloat control, and the structures tend to exhibit a more statistical isotropy. Through virtual inspection, it can be observed that rebloat control may weaken the spawn-wise and wall normal vertices, which is more evident in the near wall region. Additionally, compared to the triangular blood structure, the scalp blood structure exhibits a lower number of strengths of vertices. Ptrf is in tenure slice of absolute value of latex component X above the tip of the blood, which is very smaller to the instantaneous slice of R at the same height. Figure 13 shows the latex value R at the same position parallel to the river service. From this, it can be known that at this height, the vortices are primarily streamwise vortices. Overall, it is evident that scallop ripples have shorter jet lenses and lower latex value compared to triangular ripples.
the vortices with rivulets are stronger than those without rivulets. By comparing the two rivulet vigors, it is clear that the turbulent motion on the scalloped surface are less active at the same height. In terms of drag reduction, the interaction between the scalloped rivulet surface and turbulence is more beneficial. It makes the flow near the scalloped surface in the near world turbulence boundary layer become more quiet. The existence of rivulet surface has an inhibiting effect on the near world turbulence boundary layer, making the flow more stable. By weakening the spanwise velocity fluctuations, the rivulet surface can surprise the development of turbulence and reduce the intensity of turbulent motions. The last part is the conclusion. Scalp rivulets and triangle rivulets show similar renal stress distributions and vortex structures. Scalp rivulets provide a greater drag reduction effect compared to triangular rivulets. Scalp rivulets have lower renal stresses and smoother stress variations, indicating more effective drag reduction and potential reduction in turbulence. Gaps rivulets show a reduction in near wall vertices and may weaken span wise and the wall normal vertices. Through weakening the near wall flow and inhibiting boundary layer formation, the interaction between scalp rivulets and the turbulence is more beneficial than triangular rivulets. That's all for my report. Uh, finally, I sincerely invite all of you to attend the International Conference on Lutex based Vortex and Fiction Methods, which will be held in Suzhou, China from August 9th to 11th next year. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, does anyone have problems about the topic? Well, uh, uh, nobody. Yeah, I have some questions. <laughs> it sounds to me it's a very nice work about uh, and uh, 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 passive, but not the active flow control. And from my <clears throat> observation, it, it sounds to me, so you put uh, some uh, rapids, no matter it is uh, a scalp or triangle, sounds to me that means uh, the lutex is reduced. Sounds to me, yeah, it, it, yeah, because uh, a lutex is a vortex anyway. That means uh, when we, you know, calculate the turbulence, we a lot of people use eddy viscosity. It sounds to me when lutex is small, that means uh, you have weak, you know, eddies, something like that. So that, that's, that's my understanding. That looks like you re apparently you change the uh, edges or change the vortex strength. Sounds to me that 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 is the new time. Sounds to me, yeah. Uh, because uh, I think about turbulence, a lot of people use eddy viscosity. So you reduce the eddy, it sounds to strength. You reduce the drag. It looks like they call coordinate. Yeah, uh, you know. <clears throat> Uh, uh, correlated sounds to me. And uh, <clears throat> well, from your uh, conclusion, I, I cannot uh, find uh, it's very, uh, you know, uh, clear. Do you have any idea about the, you know, uh, optimization? What kind of rivets? But you say scallop is better. Well, what can scallop? 
yeah, what kind? But they have different curve, they have different uh, you know tip, something like that. So the the your uh, conclusion, I didn't find much about the directions for the future. Yeah, everybody is interested in the yeah, full control. I think yeah, the, or or drag reduction on the surface by surface. That's the thing we can call the structured. Structured surface flow control. The other name, I believe, uh, if it is going to do that, yeah, because structured surface flow control, well, it control what? Uh, apparently, I, I, from my observation, you want to con control the nutex strength. When nutex strength is weak, so then your eddy viscous is small and your drag is reduced. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, I think your, uh, uh, you know, your CF or your, uh, your friction coefficients not uh, reduce much, right? Yeah, you say uh, the other guy get 5%, uh, so you get it on 2%. Sounds for me, right? Yeah. I'm not sure you didn't give an um, explanation why they get 5%, you get 2%. But a two percent is also good. Your yeah, front pictures looks like your CF with the best is a scalper um, uh, ribbons, right? That means roof uh, sur uh, surface. Sounds for me, yeah. That's the uh, roughness. Yeah, you have roughness. Sounds sounds for me. So I get a smaller uh, CF. Small CF without this uh, ribbons, uh, your CF is high. Well, it does sound to me it's a pretty big difference. Why you only get a 2%? I don't understand this. But you, uh, your report says 2%, right? 2% uh, CF reduction. Okay, that, that's my question. So, do you have any um, explanation and uh, a prediction and uh, explanation. I just say, I'll give the people the direction, uh, which way we should go. We change the dips or change the curve, curvature or change the uh, top uh, shape or something like that. Do you have any kind of uh, conclusions or clue for other people? <laughs> or for design people. So that's what I, I, I'm I asking. Do you have any answer? <laughs> so so rather, the, 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 the drug reduction rate is 8.6%. Uh, uh, oh, 8.6. Oh, okay. yeah, for the good. scale of the ribulus and uh, 4.8. Maybe eight percent for the triangular rivulet. So that's the results we get from our numerical simulation. And oh, okay. uh, two percent and five percent for for a similar setting with a triangular rivulet. It, it, it's come from the you know the, oh. the literature. Ah, uh, Walsh oh, okay. he did the experiment. And oh, he, not by you. Uh, you get high. Yeah, okay. yeah and uh, and Chuai he did. Uh, um, you know, uh, direct numerical simulation and the 5% drug reduction rate is basically uh, in accordance with our finding of 4.8%. Uh, so, so, so that, 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 that's the question I think, I, I think you are asking. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. I just think that's I misunderstood. I thought you get a 2%, not you, that's another person. Yeah, so yeah. you get 8%. He did, the, he did you an get... experiment. So in experiment, uh, it's difficult to measure the, the, the drag, you know, because so many uh, yeah, factors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think a pretty nice work here. I've been our team also wants to do uh, some research on the surface roughness or ribbons or something. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a very nice work. <laughs> uh, well, actually, Donna, you did, did not show the the equation for the for the uh, scalloped ribulus is is actually a class of 
uh, scalar privilege. You can give different uh, parameters and find different shapes. And it, it's a class of replace, actually. Yeah, yeah. You use you use an analytical function. You know, some, some yeah, yeah, yeah. An analytical. Okay. I think it's time. You can do the <laughs> next. That's, that's good work. Oh, thanks for John Dan Yu. Uh, next, we will invite uh, Xin Dong from Suzhou University, China. The topic is application of a Leotex based subgrade stress model in flows over periodic hills. Is Xin Dong here? <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Please start. Hello, everyone. The title of my talk today is a Lutex Best Subgrade Stress Model in Critical Hills. My name is Dongxin, Chinese, and I come from Suzhou University, China. Uh, in the first part, I will give an introduction, and in the second part, I will give an observation and some analysis. And uh, in this in third part is some conclusion. Uh, first is a brief intro introduction of subgrade stress model and uh, the Lutex. Uh, first, we, we can see the two pictures here. We can see the turbulence can be seen everywhere in the nature. The relation between turbulence and AD is inseparable. Here we have a river. We have a river here. In this turbulence, we magnify it. We can see the structure of many eddies. <clears throat> and uh, another one is a fertile meteorological map. We we can see more clearly. There 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 are two eddies here. Uh, we can see the structure of we can see the structure of the AD more obviously. Uh, the AD and the turbulence are inseparable. Turbulence is mixed with large and small eddies. It is also the main cause of, of fluctuations of turbulence physical qualities. Turbulence is mixed with many vectors. So the study of vortex is an important direction for the study of turbulence. A uh, vortex is is an important aspect for studying turbulence. The study of vertex is one of the keys to understand and model it. <clears throat> turbulent flow contains eddies with a range of size and energies. So the image I go for is there on the side is just a shade profile that you would find in a lot of world boundary flows. And you can see in grid that the main velocity profile. So the mean velocity profile shared and then a last way of seeing a turbulent flow is that a turbulent flow has a mean flow profile with a range of eddies superimposed on top of it so you can see the ad in the red there in the picture the eddies have a have a range of size and you will got a very big a there all the way down to very small eddies. And if you you put a probe in the floor and you look at the uh, extension velocity field, you will find something like the plot you can see in red. The local flow varies considerably around some mean venue. That is because uh, You will find something like a you can see in red. The local flow virus considered around some mean value. That is because there are range of eddies at the location which are passing through that location. And when doing large AD simulation or LS, we we are going to do you resolve some of these eddies with the potential mass. And it is different from RANS calculation where we don't resolve any of the eddies. So we need to resolve some of these 80s with our computation. 
and how how do we do that? But the way to think about AD and safety math is in the diagram I go for you on the slide there, and we need a minimum of four cells to resolve an AD. So on the right there, you got an image of some eddies of some size and that may exist in floor bill somewhere. And then on the left, I got just four cells and you can see from the velocity vector that is the minimum possible resolution that we can use for eddies. And we point in a circle there that allow us to give a numerical representation of the AD. Uh, of course, CFD mass is going to have more than four cells at what we got for you here. It's just a grid of four by four cells. That is 16 cells. <clears throat> this mass is capable of resolving a lot of virus ADs with a variety of size. On left, there's a large one about four un units in mass and four units in height. And uh, on the right, there are also smaller ones. They can also be in different positions. So we know that if you have a safety mass and then mass is capable of resolving a range of different AD size. And of course, in the actually, if you do get flow field, you won't see these clearly resolved AD's in the elusive vectors. Of course, there will be a variety of different ADs superimposed on top of each other. So you can see that the mass can show a variety of AD size. However, it is very important that the mass cannot resolve the ADs current that are smaller than the width of two cells. And the reason for that in CFD, we calculate the velocity field at the cell central centrals it if you look at the image there you will find a very small ad this ad is smaller than the mass and the, the mass cannot solve this rotation the mass can only solve the cells larger than a certain size so what should we do with the small size of the mass because in because in ls we cannot simulate all the ad's the, the answer is we use the subgrid model. Subgrid model, this means that it is a model for modeling the effects of eddies are smaller than the grid. Uh, next, I will introduce two traditional subgrid models. Uh, the, the, the first one is Magritte model. Let's assume that the velocity smaller than size of the grid are all homogeneous. That is the shape of the vertex is the same. But size is different, so the sublatic velocity is just a scalar quality, and the uh, VSG is uh, proportional to the amount of velocity and the amount of size we get. We can get from the uh, following formula, uh, where VSG is the AD velocity, CS is model convenient, delta is the characteristic length uh, scalars often determined by the Filling width of the mass and the uh, SIG is defined as shown following. Represents the flight of a rate of strain tensor. Here, IJ represents three spectral direction. The model convenience CS has different suggested value in different program and codes, and the uh, really adopt a value of 0 0.03. Uh, but smart risky model ha also have some problems. Uh, when 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 we approaching the visual suppliers, subgrade stress is not zero, indicating that subgrade velocity still exists in the viscous supply. And uh, in reality, the subgrade works in this stability to be dissipated. <clears throat> so. The Wallet model is built. The model, which is based on the square of the velocity gradient tensor, accounts for the effects of both the strain and the rotation rate of the smallest resolved turbulence fluctuations. 
Moreover, it recovers the proper real world scaling for the AD with cost T with without without requiring dynamic procedure. It is also shown from a, a period turbulence pipe flow computation that the model can handle transition. And in volume well in in the volume model, the subgrade scale AD VST is Evaluated as as this formula follows, and the, the subgrade KSG is definitely as this. And although the rotation motion of the fluids that is vertex is a coin of the turbulence model, vertex identification methods are rarely used in the model for the development of AD. Vortex utilization, we have the following history. The first generation is just simply use the vorticity to represent the vortex or capture the vortex structure. And in second generation, it's uniquely determined by the energy values of the local velocity granite tensor. And in the third generation, it extracts the rigid rotation of fluid from the fluid motion and use lutex to define and identify the vortex structure. And in lutex, in lutex vortex identification method, the vortex omega is further divided into rotation part and the long rotation part. That is the formula following, where the Rs are the rot rotational and the shear part of the Vorticity vector respective. And the explicit formula for the lutex vector, the lutex is a vector defined as a R, where R is the magnitude of lutex and the smaller R is the direction of the lutex. Uh, it is normalized real energy vector of the velocity gradient tensor such as that omega r. And the explicit formula of r is the, is the formula following. So the lutex vector can be defined as, as this formula following. And the advantage of the lutex method, when lutex as the third generation vortex identification method greatly outperforms the, the previous two generations and Many reflected by new tax is a, a current response representation of the physical amount of the vortex with a clear physical meaning. The vortex identification mentioned represented by new tax of problem of threshold section for second generation vortex identification mentioned. The new tax mentioned is able to represent quantitatively the six elements of the vortex. And in the second part, I gave the operations analysis. Uh, this is an uh, introduction of the grid setting. The grid distribution adopted in study is uh, 160 by 115 by 60. And the total number of sales is almost 1.1 million from a cross sectional perspective, this grade will be denser below because in the critical hills, there are often more complex vortex structure at the bottom. Therefore, design a denser grid below can help us obtain more information in complex, in complex flows. The, the, the grade distribution adopted in uh, this, this, this is our Results are all calculated by Incompass 3D, which can be downloaded in GitHub. The surface can model with the customized immersed boundary in Compress 3D based on uh, uh, alternating direction forcing to ensure a long slip boundary condition at the wall of the solid body. Uh, this is the contour of three models average amount span wise. In these three figures, Margariski, Wally, and the Lutex-based model are used to 
representatively, we can see the slower part of this like risk model and the volume model is slightly larger than the Lutex based model in the part near the upper wall in the X direction. Lutex based model give a more velocity field with the velocities around 0 0.8 than the other two models. And, and uh, only the Lutex based model gets flow velocities about 0 0.8 and the new text based model looks more complete. At the bottom of the pretty quills, the region of the complex velocity obtained by, by new text based is a little larger than that obtained by, by the two models. However, the speed of Wallace model detection will be slightly larger. Uh, this control of three models averaged by the time. Uh, the velocity distribution in the flow field is not evenly balanced and the follow velocity slows down near the upper boundary, which is affected by the boundary condition. The AD obtained under the smart risky model on the noise wall surface is smaller than that obtained by the Wally model and the Lutex based model. And on the whole, the model obtained by the Wally model and the Lutex based Lutex based model are very similar in general. And next is the mean stream wise velocity profile at different station of the predicate hills at x is equal to 1, x equal to 2, x equal to 4, and x equal to 8. In this four image, we can clearly see that the mean strength-wise velocity obtained by the new test best model is not so smooth. In smart risky model and the wallet model, the curves obtained and the are obviously and smoother. And in the air near the boundary, the new text based model obviously does not change as much as other two models, and the velocity on the wall is zero. So there is there is a part u equal to zero section at uh, x is equal to one and uh, x is equal to eight. And the new text based model is obviously not as much change as their two models near the lower wall. And and then the third part is my conclusions. The new text based model in critical hills has a good effect can handle the flow of the boundaries very well. And the compute computational mass in stream wise direction is fine. The setting for the mass still need to be adjusted to reduce the impact of the grid on the model, while also applying the new text based model more flow to take advantage of this model to do more in deep research. And uh, here I have one more thing. And in the last year, in the 9th to the 11th of August, the International Conference on New Text Based Vertex Identification Mentions will be held in Suzhou, China, in Suzhou University. And I truly here invite everyone to attend this meeting in next year. And uh, Thank you for your attention. Uh, okay, does anyone have problems about the topics? Well, well, about uh, I want to make some comments. <clears throat> uh, as I said, I said before, well, this is my personal opinion. Uh, the first the <clears throat> um, point is uh, I don't uh, trust uh, Smaganski model or dynamic Smaganski model can work. But the reason is uh, they are against the physics. Uh, because we still use mostly we use the AD 
with car city concept. We still, you know, most people say 80. But near the waters, I said, near the waters, never enough. The noise. But share is a bit. So according to Smagansky model, you are lost of any waste capacity is very strong near the wall. This is just against the physics. Any kind of Smagansky model or dynamic Smagansky model cannot work. I don't think they work because the reason it is against the physics. That's, that's I believe. Well, if anybody, you know, who don't agree, well, you can challenge me. That's my <clears throat> comments. Also, I don't have any many, many good words for other type model because they are all against the physics. <laughs> so the, the AD with CASID should be correlated to AD. AD is large. The AD with CASID will be large. AD is small. The AD with custody should be small. AD is zero. The with custody, AD with should be zero. It should be clean. Well, that's the only one choice. You have to use a new text. New text is zero near the wall in the namina, you know, sub layer. That's what I think. That's my first uh, comments. Uh, well, I, I welcome to discuss because the workshop. This is a workshop. This is not a conference. Not it's a workshop. Workshop uh, means we can discuss. It. If anybody you have different opinion, welcome to challenge me. So I'm very questionable to all of this subgrid model and the turbine model because they are mainly against the physics. That's my first comments. The second comments, I think uh, uh, Dr. Wang and his students used Lutex to construct the subgrid model or even the future turbine model. I know this workshop has some people use Lutex for turbine model. I think it is a good start, I think. As a, from my opinion, I think, uh, Dr. Wang did a, a pioneering work, and really, because I didn't see anybody use Lutex to construct a subgrid model before. I didn't. The first time when I saw the, uh, his paper, uh, in, and uh, I think, well, this is a pioneering work. Nobody used it. So, but of course, this is not the end. This is the start or beginning. So that's I just encourage yeah the, the Dr. Wang's group yeah try more to construct a more accurate uh, you know subgrid model and turbine model. I don't trust the all other models because uh, the tur turbulence is caused by vortex. Vortex and nutex they equal equivalent. They just equal very single. So so vortex is strong. Uh, so uh, as a new technology, then turbulence wrong. If we use the uh, viscosity concept, <laughs> we cannot go to the other direction. So the, the 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 conclusion for me is very clear. I think yeah. Anybody, if you don't agree, you can you know against me or you can challenge me. No, I welcome. Well, then of course there's a question. How about we spend so many years to study vortex, study the uh, subgrid model and uh, turbine model? I know um, uh, Smart model is, is quite old, it's several decades. And then people develop some dynamic, they call it dynamic Smart model. It make, doesn't make much sense to me. What do mean dynamic? The dynamic has solved every problem. Uh, that's their claim, but I never saw the results. Dynamic Smagansky model solved all the problems. I say, I just say they caused more problem because the AD with custody, it depends on AD. If law AD, so you use shear. Shear is strong, but unfortunately, shear is strong, the with custody, you know, will be weak. Yeah. So not strong. Some say, well, she is strong, 
the uh, viscosity is your large. Well, the true. That's caused by your velocity gradient, not caused by the viscosity. But turbulence mainly they change the uh, the viscosity. Well, they call it eddy viscosity. <laughs> Unfortunately, eddy viscosity is zero because we don't have any eddy in the sublayer. So, as I said, uh, Dr. Wang did a uh, uh, pioneering work. We, we, we have no other way to go. I think we don't have any other way. We have to go to this way because this follows the physics. That's my understanding. So I really enjoy their work. And I asked my PhD student to try to use his model. I was surprised seeing they get very successful. So that's why I suggest no matter you know uh, how much you spend the money for the turbine model research, you no know, matter how many years, how many decades, develop different models, the dynamic Smakansky model. <laughs> Unfortunately, against the physics, so so they have no no chance to get a success. I don't think no chance. Yeah, frankly, can't help. So I don't want much dominant, but uh, anybody uh, not a. Uh, Okay, comments to the work also you can against me. Okay, let me stop it. Give them time uh, to other people. Okay, uh, thanks for the comments. <laughs> thanks for the comments, Professor. Uh, well, no, no, I think this workshop people have different opinions, just you know. Uh, you know, uh, raise your hand. You say, I don't agree. Okay. So what's your reason? You don't agree. That's <laughs> my personal opinion. Even my group, we don't get agreement yet. But uh, that's my personal opinion because, uh, well, there's a still, uh, they say, well, uh, the dissipation, you know, um, is, is large near the wall. That's true. But that's not caused by any Wisconsin. That's caused by the we lost it gradually. There's nothing to do with the eddy. The laminar phenomenon. Even, even it is the large, the the the, the, the you know the, the dissipation is large, the drag is large. Well, that's not caused by turbulence. That's caused by velocity gradient. That's my understanding. Well, we have some um, turbulence uh, expert. Not maybe not many. We have some. Some, I think, they, they have the turbulence, you know, experience. But, but as I said, there's no chance for this turbine model or subgrade model get a success. There's no chance. <clears throat> well, last work, I think. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, anyone else have questions? Well, uh, about the wave, I, 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 I would like to say that wave, uh, you know, the subgrade might, might get some kind of success, but uh, I don't like, uh, uh, you know, very much to try to, you know, according to data, explain the data and try to fit the data. The data fitting, you know, method is not very encouraging because this is not scientific. This is empirical. So that's also I don't like. We like science. You match the science. The turbulence model should match the science, not by uh, empirical. Well, empirical, also, of course, you can get a, a pretty good results, but this is not science. And this is what I think. Yeah, and that's uh, I say. Uh, also, you know, way model some is very complicated. We really don't know what the physical meaning is. We don't know. Well, we if physical meaning for this is very simple because eddy with cause is caused by eddy. If eddy is large, new text large, new text like eddy is large, new text zero, eddy zero. Well, that's the equivalent. I, I just say that's very natural and the equivalent. That's what I say. Okay, yeah, I talk too much. 
Okay, thanks for Dr. Liu and thanks for Xingdong. Um, next, we will invite uh, Jia Junlong from Nanjing University of Aeronauts and Astronauts, China. Uh, the topic is new text-based director field inversion and machine learning framework in P. Henley Sova. Is Jia Junlong here? Hello, Jia Junlong. I think Yi Sen Gao is here, is that? Yi Sen? Yi uh, Sen? Yeah, you, that's your student, is correct? Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's also, I can report the results. Yeah. Okay. Then you should give it a talk. Your yes, student is not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's working on his final thesis, so. Uh, I report. Well, you, you just can do the presentation. Yes. Okay. How to share my screen? Oh, no, wait a moment. To share my screen. Okay, if anybody okay. can see my presentation? Uh, yes. Okay. 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 Hey, Judge Long is my student, so uh, he's working on his final thesis, so and this time, uh, I will present. I will present the results. Okay. Uh, our topic is database based field inversion and machine learning framework. Okay. First, the, I would like to talk about motivation. Okay. The development of RANS modeling is stuck in stagnation. We can we can see here. And after 2000 years, uh, the development of RANS modeling is stuck. Is stuck. So in a commercial code or in in-house code, we use usually use uh, the old RANS model such as SA model or SST model. And the current Tobias model is not accurate for separate flows. Uh, for example, we can see uh, for large angle of, of attack, uh, the lift coefficient is not accurate. The separate flows violate some assumptions used in a turbulence model, uh, such as equilibrium assumption of the ID viscosity model. So for separated flows, the, the existing REST model is not accurate. And crucial con constant is usually calibrated based on attached flows of, a, of a simple geometries. Here are crucial con Contents used in the SA model, but use use of exact values may deteriorate the performance of turbulence model. So we cannot use the use exact values. Machine learning is a core technology for science computing in these years, and it can accelerate the speed of direct numerical simulations, DLS, and you can also improve turbulence modeling, or you can develop, reduce model, 
reduce all the models. So we try to use new tags to improve turbulence modeling. Use, use data to directly make, make predictions need huge data. And the direct inject high fidelity data to a model is not, is not consistent. So we try to use FIML framework to generate, to generate information consistent with the model. So we try to generate a machine, a machine, a machine model based on new test data to correct the SA model. Next, we talk about the new types. Here we use 2D version, it means a scalar version of new types. So this is the, the simple, the simple form, formulation. It's a scalar, not vector. And next we will try to use RS decomposition, but, uh, but it's not discussed here. Next, we talk about uh, FIML framework. The standard form of the SA model is, is present here. We can see production turn and destruction turn and some constant, crucial time constant, but uh, it's not very clear the meaning of this constant. We can see here. The, the LD viscosity is, is calculated by this formula, mu t. So we use mu t to model the turbulence. And the main source of discrepancy is the function form of the mode. So we would like to introduce to correct the model, use correction term beta. We introduce beta to the production term. So the new production term is here. PC means I multiply, multiply the original one with beta. And beta is, is a function uh, respect, with, respect to, with respect to some features or Location. And FIML, it means Field Inversion and, mach and Machine Learning Framework proposed by Dry Sami and co works in, like, in 2017. The inversion mo inverse modeling to infer the spatial distribution of model discrepancy and machine learning is used to reconstruct discrepancy information from inverse problem into corrective terms. Now we can see here, we can see uh, CL, CL ESP means experiment, experimental value. And CL means the value calculated by CFD. So we can see a large discrepancy. Now we can construct an objective function, J beta. It's a function of beta. And we solved an inverse problem to find the, distribu the distribution of beta. We can use discrete, discrete adjoint method for field inversion the inverse problem J beta can be solved by a gradient based method. We can see here, we can, we can use discrete adjoint method to find DJ, DJ D beta. New test based framework is, is, pre, is presented here. First, we use open source CFD software SU2 equipped with FIML method. It's an open source soft, uh, CFD software. 
next we add the, the calculation of new test magnitude to SU2. It, it, it is pre presented here. And next we choose new test magnitude as one of feature, one of features. We use PyTorch for offline learning. And then LibTorch is covered with SU2 for prediction. It means we correct the SA model. Next, we, we test the result of the result for separated flows. First, uh, we, we perform further inversion. We use S, S A09L foil. The history of field inver inversion is present on, on the right. Next, we try to find some features. It's based on feature selections. First, uh, we can see beta, the, the, the beta distribution. Next, we present the latest magnitude chi delta, destruction term, production term, strain rate magnitude and, and vorticity magnitude. We can find the latest magnitude is consistent, is consistent with the separated flow, separate, separated re, re zone. So we can plot correlation coefficient pairs for candidate features. We can find the latest magnitude uh, shows the strongest function relationship to beta. Next, we, we try to learn the data. The left one is conver convergence history of loss function. And the middle one is the result of, um, the result of a test set. And the right one is our Python code based on PyTorch. And next, we use uh, S809 for, for our FIM, FIML framework. The, ne the, the left one is pressure coefficient distribution at 19.2 degree angle of degree, angle of attack. Next, we try to um, or we'll try to predict pressure coefficient at at the sixteen point two degree and nineteen point two degree. We can see here the new test new test essay means our new test based FIML. It shows the best result. Also, we try to we try to test uh, the generalization generalization ability. So we test another air foil. We use S A one four air foil. The result of pressure coefficient at nineteen point two degree is present on the right. We can see. SA, new test SA shows the best result. Yeah. Conclusion. And we, we can find new test is very promising for FIM method. It means new test can be used as, as one of the features. Next, we will try to new test tensor, tensor form and other latest based variables. And next, generalization ability of latest based environment needs more investigation. We try to test the periodic queues and other separate flows. And next, we, we, we will release our code next year. Thank you. Uh, okay, does anyone have problems about the topic?
Somebody raise their hands. Yeah. Oh, oh so, okay, I can. You can see it. Somebody yeah, raise their hand. Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I try, try to try to find. Oh, oh. No, I think this is Emerald. Uh, I have a question. Like uh, I have seen that you applied machine learning techniques, neural yeah. network, and the algorithms. I just wanted to know: Did you use here the CNN? Uh, I'm not saying yeah, I trust the use the. Uh, okay, as far as the the, the, the basic one, not CNN. Oh, okay. I would present now. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. We try to give a uh, my new networkers. Okay, wait a moment. Please wait a moment. I try to find. Okay. I try to find. Oh no 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 no! It is these computers, okay, but I, I, I can find. Okay. Can you see? Yes. Can, can you see the, the new network? Yes, we use the the, the simple a uh, simple one. You know, not CIM. Okay, okay. And uh, could you please also explain a little bit about the the feature uh, extraction or something like that you did? Uh, can you please just explain a little bit again? Uh, oh, the oh, there is one slide about features. Uh, oh, okay. You, you mean the feature selection, yeah? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, uh, here, this one. Uh, I think, uh, can you please go up a little bit? Go up a little bit. Not this slide. There's another slide I found. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this one. yeah, yeah, that one, that feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you please tell a little bit about if we have time? <laughs> no, he has plenty of fun. <laughs> that slide, just feature selection uh, with the uh, the the uh, twenty seven. And this uh, yeah I mean, I just wanted to know again a little bit about that feature selection. Uh, Yeah, I, I I think uh, Emeron is yeah. interested, but uh, you can talk to Dr. Gollaid because I don't want to okay. keep this screen. Okay, uh, okay, uh, okay. Sign, no so, so, yeah, 
I believe right. you should uh, keep some kind of communication. Well, right. okay. when when uh, uh, Doctor Go and uh, told me he wants to use the Lutex and the machine learning for the runs. Now I was not very supportive, but I said, well, RANS doesn't have much information about the Najee water structure. Yeah. yeah. But Therefore, for, yeah. But, but for he told separate for yeah, I think it, 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 it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I think it works. Yeah. But for well, separate for yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, but okay, of course, yeah. separate uh, for separation. Now he yeah. said, that sounds uh, to me, he said, it's good. That's all. Use the new text for the, you know, uh, tube model, not sub model. It is uh, a good, uh, what he said. But uh, on the other hand, I think uh, Dr. Wang's group uh, used for sub model, but they give the uh, coefficients like 0 0.03. This is also suspicious. Why is 0 0.03 not 0 0.035 or not 0 0.04? Right. As I said, that could be empirical, could be right. case related. Yeah. So, yeah. so your know, Dr. Goss' idea, machine learning, or, you know, <laughs> what I was saying, this for the big data. That could it be, could it be, you know, useful for Dr. Wang's group for the subgrid model, you know, development. But uh, uh, to our group as well, we are doing, we are trying you know, to develop a subgrid model and the tube model. So that's why Emran asking questions. Yeah, he is also uh, take some, you know, um, commitment to do that. So I hope you can communicate it. Also, I said Dr. Wang's group and Dr. Gong's group, you should, you know, keep communication to each other. I believe, yeah, both your idea is good. I believe it's good. The term model is a model. Subgrid model yeah, is yeah. a model. So yeah, you lose about, the yeah. small scale. You lose the small mm -hmm. vertex. You can never get back. The only you, you can get a partial back or average something back. You cannot get everything back. It will be impossible. Yeah, um, unless you get a very fine grid direct numerical simulation. And then, but uh, according to theoretical analysis, I don't think we can resolve all of the small landscape. I don't think we can. Then the grid is extremely small. Uh, even smaller, I think, could be smaller uh, than uh, common group estimate. The common group estimate is only uh, about the order. It's not a you know, direct number. So as I said, almost uh, impossible. So therefore, therefore, we need, uh, in any case, we need some kind of model, sub model or turbo model. Or, on the other hand, you also, some people say that's the time depend, dependent. Or we say, uh, you know, unsteady runs. <laughs> people call unsteady runs. That, that means the time, because the runs originally is supposed to be steady, for, they don't change in time, right? But some people use unsteady runs. That means the change in time. So in such a case, uh, I think they still capture some big, but depends on the grid size, some big vertex structures, I believe. Then use these structures to estimate or to, you know, <clears throat> uh, guess or, uh, yeah, or estimate the small, how important of these uh, small edge structures. So I, I, it's just my comments. I think uh, combination of machine learning, machine learning, yeah, is best. Uh, it's empirical, uh, empirical, and uh, you know, new text based model for subgrid uh, or even for turbine grid is a good, good way to develop uh, applications for engineering. Uh, yeah, yeah. Develop some tools 
for engineering application. That's my point. That's my point. So, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate uh, Dr. Ethan Go give you know this student of you give some kind of you know ideas about combining uh, machine learning and uh, new text based turbulent model. I I believe this is also just the beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Liu. Uh, okay. Anyone else has questions? <laughs> Yeah, anybody welcome to the question because this is a workshop. Work together. It is a, yeah, not that we give the conclusion. There's no conclusion. So so I hope that everybody yeah, can, you know, don't feel shy. Just raise your hand. They yeah, ask questions. Also, in my group, as <laughs> always, they keep silence yeah, from my group. Where I'm, I'm glad uh, em, uh, Emran gives some questions. <laughs> so uh, we, we we try to do the same thing <laughs> as uh, Dr. Wang and Dr. Go. And so uh, there's no question from our group except from from me. <laughs> so don't feel shy if you don't uh, you don't understand or you don't agree. And just raise your hand. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, anyone else? Oh, we can. Uh, well, we we just start the next the on time. Well, I just ask you, uh, Dr. Wang is not here? Mm, Dr. Wang? Yeah, Yi Chen Wang is here. Mm. Uh, uh, He's I'm, not I'm, here. I'm, I'm oh. Hello, can you hear me? It may be uh, other meetings. Yeah, yeah, one's here actually. Y yes, uh, uh, Doctor Liu. Uh, yeah, I just uh, say so. Uh, what are your, your you know idea about Doctor Goss work? So, yeah, anything. So we can discuss. Right? That's, well, that's well, good uh, for uh, science. I'm, I'm not sorry. I I I am driving, so uh, I I didn't uh, you know. Uh, Okay. Did I see what I mean? You did that. You did the machine learning as well. Is correct, in my understanding? Yes. <laughs> yes. Actually, <laughs> yesterday, yeah. uh, Shang Jiang's talk is about machine learning, but uh, that's a different yeah. approach. It's, yeah, I know uh, that. You put uh, some sensors. The yeah. reinforcement yeah. learning. Yeah. Put some sensors for the uh, uh, injection or suction or injection or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah, I know this. Yeah. So as I said, your two group should communicate with each other. <laughs> well, we develop of course, science. Of course, yeah. Of yeah. Okay. 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 Thanks, Doctor Liu. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, due to some reasons, the next speaker Yi Huang can't attend the session. Who uh, that? Uh, the next speaker, Yi Huang. Yi Huang, that's the name. Yes, Yi Huang. Uh, next, uh, Yi Huang is uh, Beijing University. Uh, Beijing Institute uh, of Astronautics. Beijing Institute of Astronautical System Engineer. I don't know it was that uh, university. Yeah, okay. So he said he cannot come. Yes, um, due to some reasons. Uh, okay, so well, will we yeah, ask rest that. for an hour, uh, for half an hour. Well, that's that said that we may um, don't uh, uh, don't have the you know 
free open discussion uh, oh, so, for the uh, late time because we want to end earlier. So we uh, after 11 o'clock, you, you know, here, after 11 o'clock here, maybe your time is uh, and that's three o'clock. We, we don't, we will not have, so we don't have, but uh, we can, you know, move the free discussion and, uh, okay. you know, uh, for this half hour. So, uh, do Dr. Um, uh, Wang, do you agree with that? So we can move that, but open for discussion. Yeah, no. I'm here, yeah, Dr. Wang's here, and uh, uh, Dr. Go is here. Yeah, I think uh, 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 Dr. Yu is here. And uh, well, we have several, I see that, uh, several, I think, uh, uh, important guests. I saw them, and like, uh, um, uh, Dr. Xi yeah, from Canada is here, I believe, and Dr. I, I, I think, yeah, several people, and like Sandra from uh, Oregon uh, University, something like that, and uh, I see uh, uh, some, you know, Dr. Uh, Onino Rafila is here, yeah, he's from uh, uh, Italy. I think several important guests are here. And uh, I believe just if we, this speaker cannot come, we just change this to free discussion instead of a break because we have break time after next two talk. So, um, okay, Dr. Wang, do you agree? Dr. Wang, once not here? Of course, of course, I agree, but I am uh, driving, so maybe I, I not to talk much. Well, well, I, I just say, well, everybody can talk instead of break. Yeah, we just uh, only half hour. So we just uh, change it to the free discussion or open discussion. If you uh, any kind of challenging, because I, I encourage, you know, scientific you know, discussions and the challenges. Don't keep a silence, everybody keep a silence, then how the science can be advanced. I don't think then science stopped somewhere. They never can get advanced. So, uh, I believe we have several, as I said, important guests here. And Sandra, yeah, I think, think uh, is here and was here. Yeah, you know, she did a very you know wonderful work on the platform. Yeah, I've been new. Uh, Dr. Uh, Shi Li, uh, I think, uh, yeah, he did a lot of work about vortex, about flow control, but non Newtonian flows, I think. And uh, I've been new, yeah, uh, Dr. Bonino and uh, Rafaela. I think uh, I, if uh, I'm not wrong, I think she mainly did uh, to the space science, something like that. So these are three, you know, guests uh, here, and uh, then we have uh, several um, people who make uh, important contributions uh, to the new tech system, theoretical uh, system. So welcome to this task. And uh, yeah, or you don't understand, you can ask a question here. But uh, especially for my group, like Emra, he ask you know uh, questions you know, because he's trying to work on the uh, subway model. I think yeah, and uh, I've been a doctor user here. He's some you know want to do some full control. Well, it's a good time to ask questions. While uh, I think uh, Dr. Wang already did the full control for several years, if not, uh, if I'm not wrong. I think uh, yeah, you, you did a full control uh, starting about how many years ago? I think there should be 2016 uh, or 20, 15, right? Dr. Wang, I think uh, he's starting to uh, uh, you know, uh, use the surface to control the flow. 
it is starting uh, at about 2015 or 2016. Uh, I cannot exactly remember. Yeah, it's correct. It looks like uh, Doctor Wang is not here. He's, he he said he's driving, and so <clears throat> and that means they they already have some, you know, experiences, but we don't have. We don't have in my group. So as I said, it is a good chance for for my group people to get uh, you know learning to learning, yeah. And so why you guys keep it uh, you know science? You just ask question if you don't know, if you don't understand, ask. They are here, okay. Just like Emra, where well, okay, there's there's one raise hand, yeah. yeah. So I have and a question. Yes. May I ask okay. it? Um, so I, I'm i not really familiar with Lutex other than your presentations on Monday. I couldn't attend the yesterday um, mm -hmm. and, and a little bit from, from today. But um, I'm wondering, and I so I haven't implemented in my work or anything, right? Um, so yes. you are using the uh, velocity gradients. And so how do you manage errors in the velocities and the velocity gradients, especially when you deal with um, experimental data? And there was some experimental data shown um, in your group, especially for the tornadoes and stuff like that. How, how, how do you deal with the errors in that? Well, I agree the error could be produced at any time. Also yeah, depends yeah, yeah, yeah. on the grids. Yeah, you, you mm -hmm. got a lot of grids. Experiment means census, right? Yeah, how many experimental data you have? That depends on your, your, your yeah. experimental degree. That's, that's really true. If this the original data is not uh, reliable, so we cannot get a reliable answer, let's say. That's I believe because what we talk here is based on your original data is correct. If you well, uh, you know that for like uh, uh, Toledo, well they say mm -hmm. we don't have data. Well, I asked several people. They say we don't have data. We don't have like three D or four D data. Three D means uh, UAW X Y Z. The three D, four D means you have time. Yeah, we don't have. We only have one time because they use the, you know, um, they use the laser or something like that, or use the reader. They use the reader, reader, they get the data. That's the one time, you know, one moment, the one time step. They get the data. But this data could be 3D, could be, but mostly 2D because they use scanner. The scan only give 2D data. That's the problem. Actually, our group meet the problem. So what they data give, it is 2D. They try to yeah. make the 2D to be 3D. And also this different time. When they measure, they cannot measure at the same time. Yeah, because they need mm -hmm. to treat the data. So there's, there's, there's really problems. Yeah, I think especially for this atmosphere, yeah, atmosphere, you know, that's where very huge or oh, earth science is too large. The domain is too large. But uh, for your heart flow, I think uh, this is uh, another question, but you don't have that big domain. So you po possibly, if we use the, you know, more sensors, you can all use the, now more people use the PRV, you know, the particle imaging. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. There, so there are errors associated with those measurements. And Oscar commented that you can mitigate errors by using a higher order finite difference scheme. But yes. when we are dealing with um, experimental data, there are errors associated with that that you need to, I don't know, somehow smooth or, or do something. Otherwise, the gradients are going to be crazy. Am I mistaken? No, you are correct. Yeah, but it depends on you know uh, how big you know is the how mm -hmm. what is the resolution of your experimental data. 
If mm -hmm. you know your grades, for example, you also grades, you get very large, uh, the derivatives is not reliable. That's correct. Unless mm -hmm. it's smooth, unless it's very smooth. If not smooth, you cannot get a gradient. You cannot gradient, you cannot get a velocity mm. gradient, a tensor, you cannot. So we are mm -hmm. based, you're correct. We are based on the velocity gradient tensor. We are, we are based. If mm -hmm. the original is wrong or is not reliable, we cannot get a correct answer. You are correct. Mm -hmm. Now that's our new. Then we need to figure out how to make, uh, you know, the experiment uh, more reliable. <laughs> There's another issue. Yeah, and people now they use uh, 3D. You understand? You use 3D. Uh, uh, you know, uh, PRV. And mm -hmm. uh, I believe now they have very good camera. The camera mm -hmm. is with very high resolution. That's my understanding. Yeah, that's uh, but not only one person told me. There's uh, many, you know, people, you know, told me the resolution. Well, camera is very expensive. Yeah, if we want to get a high resolution, yeah, you can get the camera. And you can use the PRV and then get the, you know, uh, snapshot. So, mm -hmm. so that's said, yeah. So you, you can, that's what the, so your side, our side only based your, on your data. We cannot replace your data. So, so, so you understand the question. Yeah. For this guy, because the, I've been, for the Buffalo, I think there are several problems. One problem is really multiple phase. It's not one, one phase because mm -hmm. you have, you have different particles and not only fluids. So the second is your boundary. Your boundary is changed. It's not fixed, right? Mm -hmm. It's flexible. <laughs> so you change the all uh, all time. Mm -hmm. I see your. Um, I didn't ask a question when you give the presentation. How to treat this boundary nail a boundary, the wall boundary? But your wall boundary is soft. It is moving. Yeah. So that's <laughs> right. Yeah. It's more difficult yeah, how so to deal with. Yeah, so the elements are deforming. And so that was my next question. So I saw also that when you're solving numerically the equations, you usually have a very regular, very nice grid. And right. sometimes that's not the case. Like in my case, for instance, it moves all the time and it deforms and it's not uh, it's it's regular to some extent, but not as regular as some of the grids that people presented. Um, is that a problem? So obviously I can calculate um, the velocity gradient within yeah. each element, right? No problem. But yes. is that a problem that my grid is not going to be regular or it doesn't matter? Uh, for for uh, non-uniform grids, uh, while you're calculating the velocity gradient, to, or when you're doing the finite differences to get the partial derivatives, mm -hmm. you use the uh, Jacobian. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Jacobian. And that, that eliminates uh, uh, your, you, you yeah, parameterize yeah. your, your. Yeah, yeah, no, I non, know how non, to do that. My question oh, okay. is, does that create a problem in the method, in your experience, or it's it's fine, it doesn't matter at all whatsoever? No, it, yeah. it's fine. That's mathematically you are okay. projecting your grid into a parameterized space that's uniform. And then once you calculate your partial derivatives there, you revert back to your original grid. Mm -hmm. So you get uh, correct mm -hmm. calculations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Santa, yeah, may I ask? So you mainly use experiment or use the uh, CFD computational fluid dynamics? Uh, both. You both. But yeah. I suggest that you use, uh, yeah, we trust, that we can, we can trust that this, uh, you know, uh, uh, DNS or large edit simulation with uh, some subgrade model. I think mm -hmm. we can trust that even we don't consider a multi-phase. Uh, that's the first thing. Second thing, so we can compare with uh, experiment, not everywhere, just uh, with the time average. 
some area with time average. I don't mm -hmm. think you can exactly compare computation and X family. But no, no, we are, uh, yeah, no, but yeah, you're which right. you trust. Uh, for my answer is which you trust. Well, of course, the experiment work is the real work. So you should trust, but they don't have enough data. Mm -hmm. They don't have enough data. So you can trust, just use them to check, to check your uh, DNS or LNS is correct or not correct. Uh, or doesn't make any sense. That's mm -hmm. what I think. Yeah, you really cannot uh, directly use the external data then to form the uh, you know uh, velocity gradient tensor. That's that's the very yeah, very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're 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 very right about that. Yeah, there are yeah. some things that I can measure, but not all the details. And then so then I rely on um, computational techniques for That's for correct. the rest. <laughs> yeah. That's correct. You, you, yeah. you can... They use the experiment to check your yeah your yeah exactly. Is this make sense? I don't make sense. Don't 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 think they are same. That cannot be same. Mm. In my opinion, you can you can. You can interpolate your data to create a finer mesh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you would like, just uh, add. You're adding more data, but it's based off your original data. Mhm. Mm but and you wouldn't if, need that, would you? No. Why would you need that? It's not that you would need that. It's just something that uh, you could do. If you feel like uh, your boundaries are uneven, are you having issues calculating or not calculating? But what, when you do the velocity gradient tensor, are, you, are there issues arising? Well, I haven't tried like itself to do the the, the Lutex calculation, right? Uh, when I calculate, like I don't look at the um, gradients but the velocities are continuous the stresses are continuous so um you know like i didn't look specifically at, at the gradients i i think it will it will not be a problem uh, i was just asking in general um because i haven't done the sort of the lutex calculations yet yeah i know no, this yeah. but uh, yeah but uh, i'm very encouraged that you say you are interested yeah, I think uh, uh, you know Oscar here. He's now. He told me he's now the like something like the uh, former, uh, um, not a formal. Yeah, formal uh, UTA employee, right? That's I think. Uh, I don't know what his yeah, yeah. position is. So he, yeah, yeah. He I I I full time yeah, do the for the University of yeah, Texas at Arlington. And also, I my plan is I have a, a female, you know, student, you know, just a new student. I also can, uh, you know, ask her, yeah, to uh, contact you. So, so because uh, it is uh, not a realistic, uh, you, know, I directly write a program or something like that. So we may, yeah, assign mm -hmm. a student working with you. Yeah. I think I, I didn't I can, talk. Yeah. I can, I can definitely assist you in, in just writing a quick program. I have a couple no, YouTube cool. videos mm -hmm. explaining yeah. how to calculate Leutex. Mm -hmm. So it, I definitely, I could definitely help you. Yeah, that that would be cool. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> I also, yeah, no may am. Yeah, she didn't have research, you know, direction yet. May am. Yeah. And she is, I think, pretty strong um, in the numerical, I think, yeah. So she may can join the, uh, your group, as I said. I, I mean, Oscar now, now is very familiar with the program writing, something like mm -hmm. that, yeah, to write in the program. So he also can work together with you. Don't worry about that. Yeah, right now, I say, yeah, I'm very interested in collaborating with you, with your group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, then I will arrange if you uh, you uh, agree. I arrange some student and your guide, you know, guidance. But Oscar, I only can say he can, uh, you know, help me uh, as well. Uh, but uh, he also has a lot of commitment. 
So that's what, <laughs> that's what my, my understanding. So as I say, I can sign a student to work together uh, with you and Oscar. So some, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't talk to her yet because I'm in San Diego. When I yeah, come yeah, back, yeah. I said, I said, well, uh, I know you, you did a very, uh, very, you know, wonderful work. I think that now is interested in application of the text. Yeah, that's a very good opportunity for we uh, develop, uh, you know, some kind of collaborations. And uh, Dr. Wang is not here. He has like, uh, is, um, you know, international uh, conference, uh, I believe. And uh, if you guys can, you know, develop some results, you know, uh, can get some solutions. Where mm -hmm. you possibly, yeah, you, uh, uh, you could, as I said, you know, submit that paper to report in that conference. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, we, we will try uh, to publish it in the uh, SCI journal. That's what mm -hmm. I, I, I put that. Well, we need to talk after uh, this workshop. So how to do the real, you know, um, collaborations. Mm -hmm. Maybe Oscar is important because <laughs> he can, you give the data, he can immediately, very fast mm -hmm. give you graphic. So that's the same. But uh, we still want to, a student, you know, specialized in this area. But uh, we want some student, maybe under your guidance, yeah, all your your su uh, supervise, uh, yeah, supervise, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's all what I yeah hope. But well, yeah, uh, that will the, be the One thing yeah. you say we we we, you know, they all support. So we don't need money for now until we develop something, you know, mm -hmm. and you get some result. So you don't worry about this. Yeah. So I just say we we just work with you and under your guidance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any any uh, one else have questions? I think. Yeah, we talk <laughs> more detail about collaborations. So any uh, anyone else here? Yeah, we it's open. Yeah, we want to. Yeah, more people test this. You know, new text method. It's working a lot. Working. <clears throat> so. I know there's a, 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 really there is some space science people, they use the new text. Yeah. In, I think both in the European and uh, in the NASA, I think, and uh, in China. <laughs> the space people, I'm not sure what they do. They maybe study the plasma or something like that. Or, <laughs> They treat the space as uh, fluids, <laughs> so that's uh, I know I, I know uh, how to call, um, uh, Professor Bonino is here, and uh, I know uh, 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 Doctor Li Shi is here. But, uh, welcome to give any kind of discussions or questions. <laughs> <laughs> any anything <laughs> so uh, i believe uh, if he is also here as well but i never <laughs> hear any questions from you you don't have questions so if you have questions so you can ask them you 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 guys you, you want to do the supreme model uh, professor, I'm, I'm yeah. driving Oscar back home. Say again? Uh, I'm driving Oscar back, back home. Oh, I'm driving, Professor. Oh, you're driving? You're not in the uh, at home? Yeah we, yeah, we just came out and uh, have supper. Oh. Yeah, we ate food. <laughs> <laughs> so we can one hour break. I didn't eat either. So I, well, it's okay. I just say I hope you guys. Yeah, well, we still have a few minutes. I hope you guys. You have any questions? Yeah, a lot of experts here. You can ask. Yeah, I'm not the expert for every area. I just do some theoretical work or something. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So I just say you know, I'll I use the learning. That's the workshop yeah, from these experts. So if, if we don't, you know, don't answer them, I can ask them what I say, you know, because I believe. Of course, uh, there's a lot of students here as well. I know that. <laughs> so uh, any any comments or questions uh, or challenging or something like that? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, what's the next speaker? Okay. Um, Doctor Liu, shall we start the next? And no, we, we, we still start on time. I just said, let me look at it. What's the next? Speak. OK, we will start in five minutes, OK? Yeah, 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 in five minutes. Yeah. Uh, the next speak it is, uh, who is that? Uh, it is uh, Zhang Wei Zhang. Zhang Yin Wei Zhang. Yes. So, yes, uh, we, we still start on time. So we don't want to change the you know, schedules, and we have to change everything. Okay, fine. I think the uh, the second speaker is not uh, Shang Rui Dong, right? Yeah, it is uh, his students. Is he here? The, the first speaker for uh, Shang Rui Dong. Who is uh, Shang Rui Dong's student? Here? Here, here, here. Uh, yeah, you're here, right? Okay, yeah. sounds good. So we want to make sure. And how about uh, the uh, Zhang Xingwei is here, right? Zhang Xingwei is here. Uh, Xingwei oh, yeah. Zhang is here. Yeah. Oh, okay, sounds good. Yeah. So before the break, uh, so we we have two more speakers. Well, uh, even after this uh, workshop, uh, so we keep uh, communication. So that's what I want to do. Want to develop a more, you know, wide collaborations with other people. <laughs> and uh, as uh, Doctor Wang already asked. Uh, his students should uh, uh, conference, I think, you know, announcement for the next uh, August, right? Yeah, next August in 2024. I just hope, you know, most of you know, our participants, yeah, are interested. Yeah, I hope, yeah, because the first time, and the second thing is, uh, Suzhou really is a good uh, city for the tourist. <laughs> really, really beautiful uh, city, and with very you know long history and very <laughs> uh, a lot of cultures. Yeah. I've been a lot of beautiful you know ancient constructions, something. Really, yeah, I hope uh, we can meet yeah, together next the summer. Uh, now I, I'm going uh, to visit Suzhou as well, yeah, because uh, I didn't uh, visit China for five years. Yeah. Okay, uh, welcome, well, welcome, Dr. Liu. We were waiting <laughs> you. for you. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. So, <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> so we, we, we have one, one minute so then uh, to start. Yeah, yes. Uh,
Can we start? Uh, OK, uh, next we will invite Ying Wei Zhang from Northeast Agricultural University, China. The topic is impact of icing on the flow field of wind turbine blades with different IO foils. Is Ying Wei Zhang here? Hello, Ying Wei Zhang. Uh, yeah, I'm here. No, okay, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ying Wei Zhang. I'm from Northeast Agricultural University. The topic on my report today is impact of icing on the flow files of wind turbine blades with different FLs. Uh, Okay, uh, I will report on the following four facts. Uh, first uh, is the background. Uh, wind energy is one of the most popular renewable energy sources today. Uh, wind power development uh, uh, gaining momentum this year. According to the report, it is uh, uh, accepted that at least uh, 110 gigawatts uh, will be installed throughout this year. Uh, by the end of this year, total uh, installed uh, uh, capacity will reach 1 million gigawatts. Uh, wind, uh, wind energy is one of the most uh, popular renewable energy sources today. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, in the most uh, recent decades, uh, the energy industry has witnessed a phenomenal worldwide increase of wind energy owners by wind turbines. Uh, according to the relative position of the rotor shaft to the ground, they can be divided into horizontal access wind turbine and the vertical access wind turbine. And horizontal access wind turbines began to develop significantly in the 20th century, uh, added by aerodynamic uh, research in the aircraft industry. The horizontal access wind turbines have higher aerodynamic performance and are currently the uh, mainstream uh, equipment in the field of wind energy utilization. And currently, Wind turbine research organization almost all over the world are committed to making horizontal access wind turbine bigger in order to reduce costs. And horizontal access wind turbines in cold regions will uh, inevitably be uh, affected by icing. Uh, horizontal access wind turbines offshore in cold regions will have to face this serious problem. Uh, I think can lead to a series of problems such as uh, false imbalance and uh, impacted uh, patching. Uh, at the same time, the most important things that cannot be ignored is the effect on the aerodynamic performance. Uh, the purpose of this study is to discuss the effect of icing on the wind turbine from the uh, perspective of the flow field. In this study, the effects of icing on the horizontal access wind turbine are discussed using a combination of experiments and the numerical simulations. Uh, firstly, icing wind tunnel uh, experiments were carried out on the uh, on NACO18 FL and uh, S809 FL blade segments. Uh, with the angle of attack selected as uh, 0 and uh, 10 uh, degrees respectively. Uh, subsequently, the experimentally uh, derived blaze model will uh, with us is uh, uh, numerically simulated. Uh, finally, uh, the numerical simulation results are processed uh, using Lutex for further analysis. The next step is the research method. Uh, the icing wind tunnel mainly consists of a motor uh, inflow section a uh, stabilization section, a uh, construction section, a uh, test section, a uh, cooling section, a uh, pressure and a uh, control box. Uh, the icing uh, air file shape can be obtained by placing the blade model in the test section. Uh, the air file are NSA 018 and S809 respectively. The blade cord length is 100 millimeter. Uh, the blade uh, blade height is 100 millimeter. The wind speed is 8 meter per section. The angle of attack uh, are 0 and uh, 10 uh, degree. The numerical simulation was performed using ancestral and uh, the computational domain is shown in the figure on the left. 
Uh, the total number of grades is uh, uh, 10 million and the transition simulations are performed. Uh, the next step is the results. The blade model with S was obtained by icing wind tunnel experiments. Uh, as can be seen from the results showing the right side of the figure, icing will significantly change the blade shape. Uh, in addition, the S on the blade surface does not remain smooth everywhere. Mm, all these phenomena are uh, destined to have a serious impact on the flow field of the blade. Uh, the figure shows the flow field of a clean uh, CAO18L file at an angle of attack of uh, zero degree. As can be seen from the figure, the vertex is mainly uh, concentrated at the trailing edge of the blade, and the pressure and the section surface uh, behave similarly. Uh, in addition, a smaller vertex was uh, present at the leading edge of the blade. The figure on the left shows the streamline around the blade. As can be seen from the figure, uh, the flow variation at the blade surface began almost uh, halfway up the blade. And uh, as the flow moves to the trailing edge, uh, the separated uh, flow at the pressure and the uh, section surface merge together to form a, a more violent vertex. The, the slight vertex at the leading edge of the blade and uh, the violent vortex near the trailing edge can be seen in the cross section of the pressure and the section surface. Now the figure shows the flow file of the distribution of the NACA 018L file after icing at a zero degree. As can be seen from the figure, the flow file with the S blade, S blade is more complex. Uh, the vortex at both the leading and the trailing edge become more obvious. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the vertex almost uh, covers the blade surface. Uh, the more intense the vertex can be seen from the vertex distribution of each cross section as well. The figure on the left uh, shows the streamline around the blade. As can be seen from the figure, uh, the icing uh, which will making the flow variation at the blade surface uh, more intense. Also bringing the flow variation closer to the leading edge of the blade. Now, this will uh, disrupt the blade performance. Uh, it is also clear from the cross section of the pressure and the, the section surface that the vertex at the leading edge of the blade after icing is more pronounced and uh, covers a larger area. The figure shows the flow file of clean NSA 018 file at the uh, angle of attack of uh, 10 degrees. Uh, due to the increase in the angle of attack, the flow of the variation uh, on the blade surface uh, becomes more pronounced. A significant flow variation occurs at uh, both the leading and the chilling edge of the blade. And this flow variation are mainly concentrated on the section surface of the blade, while the pressure surface is almost uh, absent. In addition, the vertex is more disorganized for a distance close to the blade, while the vertex uh, gradually takes on the regular shape as the weak move backwards. From the streamline, it can be seen that when the angle of attack is 10 degree, the airflow on the section surface of the blade is more disorganized and uh, the flow separation covers almost the whole section surface while the airflow on the pressure surface does not undergo flow variation. Uh, comparatively, uh, similar to the case of a clean NACO18 FL, a strong flow variation occurs on the surface of the acid blade model. However, the turbulence in the acid blade weak is uh, much higher and uh, more ex uh, extensive which is mainly due to the complex flow kissed by the uh, irregular ice at the leading edge mixing with the uh, separated flow. The more disorganized the flow in the week can be seen more clearly in the flow field of different uh, cross section. But when the blade are asked, uh, the flow uh, uh, separated closer to the leading edge of the blade 
and the flow on the blade surface is more disorganized. At the same time, the disorganized flow stay longer in the wake. In addition, a more pronounced vertex at the leading edge is also uh, produced uh, the, in the clean blade model due to the uh, ga uh, guidance of the S ship. Uh, for the S eight zero nine FL, vertex are both mainly concentrated at the trailing edge of the blade, with only subtle vertex at the leading edge. Uh, the, the difference in that. Uh, the vertex is more pronounced at the trailing edge of the pressure surface in compared to the section surface. This is because the, this uh, FL is uh, uh, asymmetric and the pressure surface is uh, uh, concave. Uh, as can be seen from the flow distribution on the blade surface, the onset of flow variation also occur near half of the cord length which is consistent with the performance of the NACA 018 FL. But this flow field is much more disorganized. The effect of icing on the S809 FL are consistent with the NACA 018 FL, both including more pronounced flow separation at the leading edge and both increasing the less of this organized week. Uh, as the blade model is uh, uh, asked, uh, the gradual separate of flow separation from uh, where it uh, begins to the leading edge seems to be more pronounced than in the NAC 0018 FL. Uh, when the angle of attack is increased to 10 degrees, uh, the flow variation on the section surface is enhanced, which is uh, consistent with the uh, performance of the NACA018 FL. The performance on the pressure surface is slightly <coughs> different uh, due to the effect of the geometry of the uh, S809 FL. Now, there is still a more pronounced flow variation on the pressure surface. But it is uh, significantly weaker than the case when the angle of attack is zero. And the flow on the blade surface shows a forward shift of the flow variation on the section surface uh, of the blade, as well as a, a weakening of flow variation on the pressure surface. Uh, due to the effect of leading edge as shape on the blade model, there is a significant increase in vertex at the leading edge, uh, along with an increase in the length of this organized week. The flow on the blade surface shows that the, the flow variation on the section surface covers almost uh, the entire surface, while the flow on the pressure surface is hardly affected by icing. Uh, finally, there is the summary. Uh, in this study, the effect uh, of icing on the flow field of wind turbine blade is discussed by uh, combination of experiments and the numerical simulation. Uh, the results are as follows. Uh, icing case uh, significant change in the geometry of the blade and their effects is aerodynamic performance. When as the blade produces more vertex than clean blade, uh, the weak of as the blade is more complex and uh, the length of uh, disorganized weak is uh, increased. Okay, thanks for your listening. Oh, okay. Anyone have problems about the topic? Well, we still have 15 minutes, so 
uh, you know, I'm the name and I don't know anything about his eyes. I just ask the questions. The first the question, what is the purpose for we studied this topic? So we know eyes is important because uh, aircraft, uh, they could not the you know, lift, could cause the accident. For the for this uh, wind turbine, what is the purpose? Why we need to study the ice airfoil? The my uh, question. Okay, thank you. Um, as we, our university is uh, in Harbin, where it's very cold, and the blade always being iced in winter, and uh, it's. Uh, affected the uh, confusion of uh, CL. We, we need to we need to study it and uh, we want to know the effect of the ice on the blade. Well, in, in any case, well, not, not only helping, I think all north side of China, they should, could have the yeah. ice. Or yes. smooth. Well, that could change the air foil shape. They change the shape, as you said. You get a, a more vortex structures. You maybe you get a, a, a more, uh, you know, tracks could be, I don't know. Yeah, maybe you can change the wakes, something like that. But uh, I just say your study. Just the end, uh, try to understand uh, how the effect, uh, uh, effect it is, right? How effect this uh, performance? You mean uh, you may not get less electricity? You may, uh, I don't know, you may, you know, get uh, something damage to the airfoil, or you may, uh, you get, uh, you know, other you know, uh, uh, ungood, not good, some kind of uh, um, environment, uh, pollution or noise or something like that. I still, I just asked uh, something like student, ask you questions. So uh, what is it, your purpose? What is the eyes, uh, you know, uh, give the negative, you know, uh, in influence, negative affections? to the wind turbine. So I, I still don't fully understand this. So you understand my questions? Is if we have ice, if we don't remove the ice, what happened? What are the kind of uh, um, problems, cost? That's my question. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, the noise is uh, it should be there, and uh, the most uh, important is uh, the. It makes it uh, not steady. The lift uh, confusion much lower than the normal blade, and we can we can't. Uh, Sorry, I can't uh, explain it very clearly. <laughs> clearly. Well, you said uh, the the performance become worse. That means uh, uh, you cannot generate, uh, you know, uh, high something like the voltage or you cannot generate, uh, you know, uh, much electricity. Is is that correct? I think all oh, you say you can generate more noise. Yeah, uh, where noise maybe some people don't care because they are far away from the <laughs> yes. wind turbine, right? Some people say, well, your wind turbine is built uh, in the mountain area or near the sea or something like that. We don't care. We, 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 we didn't hear the noise. Some people may say, well, the other, you know, if effect is uh, could it reduce your power supply because uh, you change the shape. Uh, they may be rotated slowly. That could happen. And that's, that's my understanding, right? And, yes, uh, yes. 
Is, is that correct? My understanding was so. So, so uh, you need to know uh, what kind of you know uh, problem they cost. So that's the one of the purpose you study, right? Yes. But the second question is how to deal with it. You cannot just say, well, your sky don't, you know, give the snow. Yeah, we cannot say that. Also, it can, it shouldn't give very low temperature. And so that's to say they, they cannot, it's natural. So the, when you study, how to solve this problem? How to solve? Uh, that's my question. Yeah. We can use uh, electricity to warm it and then make the, to warm, warm the ice. Or we can use the um, warm flow. Okay. Or you can, anything you can change the airfoil shape. I don't know. That's a, that's a, I'm a student. So I don't know if we change the, uh, the, the blade. The blade or uh, airfoil shape can reduce the uh, ice. I, I don't know. Uh, so, yes, uh, it can, can be helpful. So, but you, you actually, I, I saw you use the something like the uh, Naka 0018, right? And uh, like S, S800, something like that, right? So, what are you? Uh, your conclusion or your experience. So, which uh, airfoil is better, or what kind of shape is better? Do you have any idea about that? I just say you you test two different uh, airfoil, then you uh, use the two different attack angle, right? So, uh, that's my question is. Uh, is the air for your shape and the air for your attack angle change the ice? Then my question is, or change you are reduce the ice, you know, effect effects. Did, did you find anything? Um, made the S eighteen. S89 will be more easy to get iced because the ice affects about the air. The, the air is bigger than the ice is bigger. Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't catch up very well. You say it's. Uh, which bigger is ice bigger? You say the the airfoil is bigger, ice bigger, or I didn't fully catch. Can you repeat that answer? Can you repeat? It? Yeah. The so air foil. Air foil. And right. the, the the shape will affect, but um, not very not very important. Not that important. How about the uh, attack angle? So uh, attack angle. Yes, it can, can, it can will attack. affect it. So uh, attack uh, attack angle larger, and your eyes uh, is larger uh, in, or small. In low attack angle, the eyes will will be more, but in, when it uh, is much much higher. The as well will be smaller. Yeah, because you have gravity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you have gravity, so the uh, the ice cannot accumulate; they, they drop down, something like that. But uh, on the other hand, uh, your um, attack angle cannot be too large, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. There's some balance you need to uh, optimize. I think consider all of this, uh, <laughs> you know, facts. So. Um, 
So that's what I said. Well, I, I, I just say I ask you because you have time. I ask you the questions as a student because I'm not familiar with this area. We know the ice is not good. So all the uh, aircraft, they, before they take off, they try to warm up or use the water uh, to remove uh, this ice because the ice change the airfoil shape. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, they, yes. when they change the uh, shape, they could, you know, affect the performance of the aircraft. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's really dangerous for the, you know, passenger uh, aircraft. Well, for your turbo machine, it's not dangerous. It just reduces the, you know, performance. <laughs> so performance is not that good. That's just optimization. You know, the problem. So it's not a you know, cost the human's life. I don't think that's the case, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, any any reason you just say, we, what's your purpose? What is the goal? What do you want to do? It doesn't work. Really. My question is. So, so I, I, I did see, it looks like your group you did a lot of work on the tube machine. We, uh, not a tube machine. Wind turbine, a wind turbine, something a lot of regular uh, turbo machinery, the wind turbine. So it sounds to me with that. Yeah, so your looks like uh, your group did a lot of work. And uh, actually, you had a second uh, people talking about the ice, right? Yesterday, looks uh, like, yes. uh, yeah, somebody. But you mainly uh, uh, talk about the uh, experiment work, right? You talk about computation, I'll talk about the experiment or both. Yes. Both, uh, right? Uh, both, both, like uh, really, uh, both uh, the computation uh, and, and the experiment, right? right. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. I see you, you are, you are computation. You use something like uh, some, I, I'm not sure. Yesterday I see that they use answers, something like that, or fluent. So for the computation, does I see that? Uh, did you also do some experiment work? Yes, I do some experiment work. Uh, experiment work. Sounds good. Especially for the north side, north side of China. Yes. <laughs> Same thing, I think, with the north side of the United States, I think. In the South, people don't worry too much because we don't have snow. We don't have uh, ice. <laughs> so just uh, maybe in Texas, uh, once a year, on or, or never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have the uh, ice, I think. But in the North side of the US, of course, they have several months they have snow. That's yes. Yes, they are meaningful. Yeah, okay, you. they're just the, people that are all shy. They don't want to ask any questions. You know. I, I just we should encourage people, you know, asking questions if you can. You have one more minute for the next speaker.
Well, it's the time, I think. Yeah. Um. Okay. Next, we will invite, uh, Xin Rui Dong from University of Shanghai for Science and Technology, China. The topic is research on vortex motion mechanism and air uh, artificial intelligence intelligent flow control of turbulent boundary layer. Uh, is Xin Rui Dong here? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, okay. Hello, everyone. It's a great honor to attend this meeting. I'm a student of Shanghai University of Science and Technology. My name is Zhu Jiahao, and my tutor is Xiang Dong. The topic I'm reporting on today is study on reconstruction of turbulent boundary layer, flow field by PIN. And next, I will explain our research context from these aspects. The first is the research background. Most research fields will encounter turbulence problems. In particular, wall turbulence involves flow mechanism, control drags, reduction, heat transfer, and uh, mass transfer. Many classical theories and models of turbulence have been proposed by predecessors, and the several mean coherent structures have been proposed through turbulence experiments and uh, numer numerical simulation. In the experiments study of turbulence, a uh, variety of flow field measurement and flow visualization method has been devel developed. In addition, in recent years, the research content based on big data technology have been carried out at home and uh, abroad in combination with numer numerical simulation. Most of the current research focuses on this issue, turbulent flow field measurement and uh, connective statics, vortex generation mechanism and self-sustain mechanism, flow field prediction and intelligent flow control. In terms of flow field measurement, scholars at home and abroad have made many breakthroughs. In recent decades, many non-contact image measurement methods have been developed rapidly, such as PIV, PTV, PSV technology, which can obtain high resolution, two dim dimensional and three dimensional flow field, particle trajectory flow field, and so on. Then we, then I will introduce our work on the measurement of turbulent boundary layer flow field. Uh, before I introduce our work, I need to introduce what is PIN. <clears throat> it's so-called physical inform neural network. In fact, is to add the physical equation as a limit to the neural network so that the training res result meet the physical laws. How is this so-called restriction realized? In fact, by adding the difference before and after the interaction of the physical equation to the loss function of the neural network, the physical equation is also involved in the training process. In, in this way, the neural network optimizes not only the network's own loss function during the training interaction, but also the difference of each inter interaction of physical equation, so that the final 
Phoenix result satisfies the physical law. And uh, this is the mirroring system and equipment we use. Uh, the first is the measurement uh, system and experiment device. Here, showing a diagram of the uh, circulating water tuner experiment devices. The measurement object is turbulent boundary layer of the channel. We used the moving single free long explorer image method and the moving PIV proposed by our research group to realize the measurement. The following, the following is the arrangement of sheet light. By changing the shooting angle, the flow structure and the dynamic developed process can be clear captured. Therefore, in this part, we carry out the spatial resolution correction and the time prediction research based on PIN for the turbulent flow field of numerical simulation and experimental measurement. First, first for the numerical simulation results of compressible turbulent boundary layer. The date of a part of the blank area showing in the left figure is executive. In advance to simulate the possible date loss in the simulation experiment as a training set date. And then the com complete flow field information is predicted based on PIN to achieve spatial resolution correction. The input of neural network is co coordinate information x and uh, time t and the output is vol vol velocity uv and uh, the pressure p. Through the, through the loss curve, it can be found that the prediction accuracy can be the negative third power of 10. In addition, the pressure field can also be obtained by learning the NS equation. And the mean, and the mean square error between the result and the original state also convert to small value. In addition, the time prediction of turbulent flow field is also carried out based on the result of the first 80 moments and the last 10 moments. The prediction accuracy is also better by analyzing the loss curve. Next, we, pre we predict the time and space of PIV measurement result of the turbulent flow field. For spatial resolution correction, we simulate two cases. One is to assume that the resolution of our original ex experimental data is low, and the other is to assume that data of local area can't be measured due to the limitation of experimental condition. The left image is the velocity field measured by PIV. The middle and the right image are the spatial resolution correction flow field obtained by training PIV for these two cases. And the prediction accuracy can reach the negative power of Sorry. At the same time, we obtain all no pre pressure field information based on the 
equation prediction and uh, can preliminary analyze the existence of low pressure zone in the vertex region, which is consistent with the pressure field prediction results. However, since we have not, not carried out the work of pre pressure field measurement, we can't verify the prediction accuracy of the pressure field for the time being, and the follow-up work will be carried out. We also predict the time of the mirror date based on the result of the first eight, 80 moments and the last 20 moments. The loss curve also converge well. And we also made the prediction of the incompressible flow field. We intercepted the simulate flow field date of the air fill weak, weak as the training set and uh, trained the PIN network model with, uh, with all the data of, to obtain accurate flow field information with an accuracy of the force, the negative of force of 10, power of 10. We, and we also take some data of the flow field to train the network model. And finally, predict the flow field information of missing this part and the effect and the accuracy as well. We also carried out the reconstruction of the compressible flow field flow field. We intercepted part of the flow field date of the chic boundary layer as the training set. Whether it's to dig out small part of the date as the training set or to dig out most of the date of the training set of the neural network to predict the missing part, the prediction accuracy are also will. And then we also did the work of reconstruction the flow field information of the steam box. You can see the structure of steam box here. Due to the construction problem of the steam box, we found that the P traditional PIV method can't obtain the complete flow field information in the process of optimizing the flow field structure. So we used PIN to predict its complete flow field. And we can see the predict results are very good compa compared with the result measured by PIV. And then is conclusion and future work. Um, in this paper, a uh, tension vol velocity field reconstruction, the pressure prediction and uh, spatial temporal prediction are carried out for both of the compressible and incompressible channel turbulent boundary layer based on PM and new neural network method. The data set, the incompressible channel turbulent boundary layer is served by, served from experimental results and the su supersonal turbulent boundary layer is simulated by LES method. The feasible of PIN for the data a simulation of the turbulent flow field is proved. PIN demonstrate to have a great potential of spa spatial temporal prediction for both e experimental and uh, simulated data. And this is our future work. Thank you.
Okay. Anyone have questions about the topic? There's always excitement. I have a question. I don't know what I mean. P I N N means. P I N N. What uh, is the full name? Yeah. Uh, full name. Uh, physical. Physical informed neural network. Oh, physics. Yeah. Informed neural network. Okay. Network. Well, that's the name. What is the real meaning? Real, real meaning, meaning is, yeah. Yeah, it means uh, to add the physical equation as a limit to neural network so that the training result meets the physical laws. Such as uh, you can add the NS equation to the neural network. And you can solve some fluid questions and problems. I saw you have a lot to experiment work, right? So your external work is still made by PRV, is correct? Yeah, uh, we should get original information by PRV because you should to train the network. Uh, your PRV is 2D or 3D? Uh, 2D, you can see. Because we it's have based on no, 2D data. Uh, we have not 3D. No, 2D. We have no, not enough camera. <laughs> no, no I, I saw you have one camera or two cameras. You have two cameras, right? Or just yeah. one camera? Two cameras. Two cameras, but, uh, right? We, but we just used one camera in this research. You you have two uh, cameras from different angles, I think. It, it sounds to me, from top and from the side. <laughs> you have two cameras. Yeah, this is the so camera. right now you cannot uh, uh, use this camera to measure 3D proof field, not yet, right? Uh, our research group, we have a uh, research group and uh, and uh, Network uh, simulation group, we, we are separate. So I can get the research information from my research group. I don't understand. You say your group can measure the 3D velocity. Is that correct? You, your, not you, your group, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can, they can get, but you not. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you, you possibly likely your master student, right? Yeah. Or PhD student. Mm. Are you? You are masters, or you are PhD student. I'm a student. You are a student. Are you just a uh, undergraduate student? No, I'm senior. You master. I'm freshman. Yeah, yeah, the math, math. So you cannot use their research tools. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this this talk mainly you just try to combine uh, uh, the neural network with the physical, you know, uh, governing equations, something like that, right? Yeah. Yes. Any other questions? I, I think uh, uh, the the session chair. Yeah, if uh, you think the uh, all right, uh, we just uh, uh, end this session and we take one hour, right? We come back. Uh, well, in the U.S. time, it should be come back nine o'clock. I think is correct. My understanding is that. Uh, is nine o'clock. Uh, so for the uh, China, I don't know. It's the 
Uh, nine, mm. seven, one, one, one o'clock, uh, one p.m. Yeah, one p.m. For lunch, they are you for lunch. Yeah, we for thing, <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Okay. So you just may take the break, and then we'll come back. We have still have three speakers, right? Yeah. And uh, we free discussion may be cancelled because we already did already. Yeah. So, well. well Everybody, welcome. You know, come or welcome. Take a, <laughs> a break or welcome to take sleep or whatever. Yeah, I will be here. And, and the, the local time is about. Uh, I'll come back in nine o'clock. So, okay. So I no, hope no. We, we can have as many as possible. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Your session chair. Go ahead. What is it? Uh, yes, uh, Doctor Liu. The next session chair is Jian Song Zhu. Uh, Jian Song, he's here. Uh, let me see. Um, are you here, Jin? Are you here? Oh, uh, he may not. <laughs> so okay, I will it doesn't call matter. Is a one oh, hour later? Yeah, you. Yes. You make sure he will be here. Okay. 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 Okay, Doctor Liu. <laughs> okay. So we may just take some. Oh, there's some some the rest hand or some time. I don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, otherwise, uh, I I recommend I suggest that we may just stop here, and then we you come back at okay. okay. nine o'clock in the U.S. and one o'clock in China. Okay. Okay. Oh, see you later. Yeah, see you later. But uh, if we uh, uh, Oscar, uh, you should. Uh, stop the recording we come back okay. uh yeah yeah yes i will stop yeah yeah you just stop the recording and uh, okay uh, when we restart okay i need a good